Hey everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Before starting the video, let me ask you a question that are you a .NET developer and you guys are looking to switch from Visual Studio to VS Code? If your answer is yes, then this video is for you. And if your answer is no, then you can still stick to this video and see the power of VS Code doing the same kind of thing or same user experience what you used to get in Visual Studio. You can get the same in VS Code with a very lightweight and versatile IDE. So what is IDE? IDE is nothing but integrated development environment which helps you for coding, debugging and managing software projects. So what you see in front of you, right, this is nothing but a code editor or you can say an IDE, which is a VS code, okay, and which is being maintained by Microsoft. So I will be using this IDE to do my .NET development from now on. Uh, most of you know that I am a .NET full stack developer and my most of the backend work is done in Visual Studio because of the C Sharp code. But last year I purchased MacBook and doing development like a, a .NET development in Visual Studio of a MacBook, I think it's not that much good. I have faced lot of challenges uh, which I can share it with you in a separate video. But in this today's video my main focus will be on how I have switched from VS to Visual Studio code. So the first thing what you will know, need is an IDE. So this is what IDE I was talking about. So you can get it from code.visualstudio.com and you can download it for your operating system. So for me it is macOS and I have already installed it. So no need to do it. I am hoping that most of you have this already. So the second important thing is that you need to have a .NET 8 installed in your system. Uh, for me again I have already installed it. So as you can see here I have two things here the .NET 8 SDK and the .NET 8 runtime. So a lot of people might have have a question that what is SDK and what is what is this runtime so dotted SDK is nothing but a tools for building the apps like which includes the compilers and library while the runtime is basically helps you to execute those apps it also helps you to manage the memory so let me try to explain you in another way so for example if you don't have SDK right so then you will not be able to compile your code okay basically uh, whenever the application compiles it makes those bin and obj files so it creates exe files correct to execute your code so you will not be able to make it without using sdk so to do that you should have sdk installed and talking about the runtime right now you want to run that particular exe so if you want to run that exe then you should have this asp.net core runtime so the good thing about sdk is that it also includes the dotnet runtime which allows the developer to run the application so make sure to install the visual studio code and the dotnet 8 sdk so now once everything is installed let's go in your vs code and here i have a very basic to do api and trust me i don't even have created the api side of it it's a very blank project what i have got from creating a new web api so if i show you the program.cs file it just have the authentication and all that thing that's it and it has one controller which is this weather forecast which you get by default whenever you create a web api project so this is how the project look like right now so what we will do right so now to get things done so what you'll do you'll have to install some bunch of extension which is provided by the microsoft team itself so the first extension is that the C sharp dev kit. So just go here and search for C sharp dev kit and you just need to install that. So I have already installed these two. So what you need to do is once you install this one, right? C sharp dev kit, this will also install the Intelli code for C sharp dev kit. So these two packages get installed. Okay. So please make a note. You need these two extensions first. Now also search for a C sharp uh, thing. So just search for this C sharp. Then you can also get this base language support for C sharp. This one, again, this is provided by Microsoft team itself. So get this installed for yourself. So good thing about the C sharp one is, can you see, you can set the theme for your uh, visual studio, like how it should look like. Should it take the light or dark mode? So I always prefer dark. So that's what I can do now with the C sharp extension. So once you have installed everything right now, so what you can see, right, the way the application was looking like this right now, so this will get changed and you will get a new option over here in your file explorer, a solution explorer here. So once I open this one, right, so can you see I'm getting uh, something similar kind of thing what I used to get in Visual Studio. So if I open up this, right, so I have my API file, which is to do. And just below that, I have my test file as well, which is the to do dot test. Okay, so this is another project, which is my test project. So rather than showing you the existing project, let me show you how can we create a new project from scratch by using the Visual Studio code. So let me close this project now and what I will do right let me close this browser as well and now what i'll do right i'll create a new window of a uh, visual studio and now if you go here in the files now you will get an option to create a dotnet 
project can you see over here so now i have a very empty file here and now i'm creating a new dotnet project so the moment you click here you'll get a bunch of options what you want to same thing what you used to get in visual Studio. so i will be selecting a uh, asp.net core web api it's one and uh, you just need to specify which location you want to create so i'll just go here and put it into my projects okay and in the dotnet i'll click on open so i want to create a project in that particular folder and now i just need to give the web application name so i'll say that uh, example app okay and hit enter and moment you hit enter right so now it will create a example app for you so can you see this is example app which is something like how a visual studio code will show but there is one good option on the top which is solution explorer so now can you see this looks again identical right so now if i open up this so over here i can see my program.cs file okay and again this has that uh, web api project which i was talking about in the last uh, application which i had that already created okay so that's how you create a new application by using so now let's see how you can build restore and clean your application okay the way you do that in visual studio so let me show you by how you can do that by using the command line okay so the command for that is suppose i want to clean the repository like suppose clean this particular application so the command for that is it's dot net and just type clean that's it the moment you do right it will do something similar the build was succeed zero warning zero error what about doing the restore again it's simple just use dot net restore and you're done okay, it will determine the project to restore and all projects are up to date now the thing is how can you build the project just to check if there is any compile time error so for example for that dot net and this you have to say dot net build and that's it can you see the build was success with zero warning and zero error let me just try to create one small error in the program.cs and let's see what it complains okay so now let's save the changes and let's try to do a .NET build again and this time can you see there is one warning and that particular file it gives that hey can you see on this line number 17 you have an issue okay so that's how it will redirect and it will give you those errors as well in the terminal so let me correct this again and build the project just everything green all right so i am able to build the project clean the project and also restore the task but uh, Shashi, we are not doing something similar in Visual Studio. We make use of the UI, the GUI of the Visual Studio. So let me tell you that the same thing can be done in Visual Studio code as well. So just right click on your application. What you want to do, you want to build, you want to rebuild, or you want to clean your projects. Everything can be done from here itself. If I click on this rebuild, right? So can you see it will take those things. So it will do the restore for you and it will again build the code for you. All right. So that's how you can do things in the Visual Studio as well. Sorry, Visual Studio code now. All right. So now you can ask me, Sashi, how about running the project? Okay. So if you follow the CLI way of doing it, so you can say .NET. Okay, dot net, then you have to say run. Okay, which project you want to run, you can specify it from here. Dot net run project. The project name is example. Correct? Example app, right? Okay, and hit enter. So now this will run the project for you. Building the project, and can you see it is running on the port HTTPS 5198. Okay, but what if Sashi, I have a different different profiles here? Can you see in the launch setting.json, you can see you have different different profiles, HTTP https and you have the is express what if i want to run the https version of my project how can i do that so to do it right again you have to uh, run the command dot net run okay specify the project example app and then you have to specify the launch profile so here you have to say launch profile and give the profile name that's it so profile name is https and hit enter so now this will run the https version of your project can you see now it is running on the port 7242 with https let me open up this project and now here i can see it is running on this particular port let me open up the swagger url the moment i click on the swagger now i can see the get weather forecast and if i click on try it out and i will be able to get all my spawns over here so which means now i'm able to run the project all right so now again people will ask sashi i don't want to use the CLI way of running the project so how can I do that in Visual Studio because not just running the project right because as a developer it is very important for you to debug your code as well so how can we do that debugging in Visual Studio code so to do it right all you need to do is just go on this particular icon which is run and debug so over here you have to click on this run and debug and now you have to select your debugger so I want to do it for my C sharp so click on C sharp okay and now here you will get exam like not example this is the application name so which profile you want to run so i can select the https profile from here so once i selected it right so now my profile is selected and now can you see my run my code got started now so now again i can do the same thing try it out and execute okay 
Now, for example, right, I'm making some changes in my code. Okay, so now I'm trying to change the range from one to two. So I don't want that five value. I just need only two values. Okay, so save the changes now. Correct. So now remember, so every time we make a change, we try to rerun the application. So how can you do that now? Once you add this debugger, right, run and debug. So on the right hand side, you will get this particular panel. Okay, so over here, right, you can click on this. This will restart your application. So once you click over here, it will again restart your application. And then you can go back in your terminal to check to refresh it and check. So can you see it opens up a new instance again. And now over here, click on get and click on try it out. So now this time, whatever changes you made, right, so the changes will be reflected. So now I'm getting only two options like two uh, what we say objects in this particular array because I have made the changes over here that's why so that's not done yet so we just cannot run the application I said about debugging so how can I debug it so it's very easy so once you are into this run mode right so what you can do you can put up your debug point over here so this is can you see it returns click to add a breakpoint so I can add a breakpoint over here now and what I will do that I'll try to execute the code again so the moment I click on execute can you see the debugger came on this particular point and now I can go over here so I can click right step over so can you see it went on the second line and here you can see all your uh, local variables things whatever happening on the left hand side uh, also if you want to hover right so i can click on this hover i can see can you see i'm getting the two object which is my weather forecast the zero and the first so we have two right so that's what i can see. so this particular array has two objects inside so that you can debug now and also you can see now it is returning to it so if i moment i click here to this it will map all the records value to this and let's click on play button and let's go back again can you see again you get the response so in this way you can actually do your debugging as well well by using the visual studio code all right so now you know how to run your application and how to debug your application but what about Shashi? if i want to add a new nuget package in my project how can i do that so to do that right you have to actually follow the cli way of doing it i still didn't got any i still don't know the way how to do things in visual studio code for managing your nuggets so if you guys know that so please let me know in the comment section but for now i mostly follow the cli way of installing any packages for example if i want to install ef core package so i can just say dot net add package and just write the package name okay so by this you can do that or else you can go over here right you can just say ef core nugget nugget package and you can search for it so once this will open right so here you can see the dot net cli way of downloading so you can just copy this particular code so copy this and just paste it over here and this will install the package in your project but before that let me close this application uh, so by this you can yeah stop the application now so now let me click on enter to install it so the moment i hit enter right so can you see now it is able to install in the project in my uh, particular example app okay just to confirm it right so you can check that in your cs project so i can find that cs project in the example app so you can check it over here that example app will have now a new package right and microsoft entity framework code so just one thing to note that like some of you can face this particular issue right so you can just press uh, ls to check in which project directory you are so can you see now I'm, i am currently into my project where i have this example app.cs project so if i do cd dot dot like whenever you create a new application so a folder gets created on the top and in this folder you will have your example app folder and you have a sln folder so always make sure that you are inside your app okay so inside your app where you have the cs project there only you should run this command of installing this particular package okay while it mostly depends on the project architecture as well so currently i just have a single example app.cs project so i'm doing it over here but in the production ready app right you will have a data project where you can install the ef core and all that so it all depends where you want to install it so always go in that directory and install the any packages for all right so now you know how to install package how to run package build package restore and all that okay but what about uh, if i say that i want to create a new application right i want to add a new app for example here i have this example app right now but i want to create a test a like test project for this so what i can do that i can just right click on this solution which is my example app and can you see i have option to say new project addition of a new project so i can add a new project i can add an existing project i can add a new solution folder i can do a lot of things here as you can see so i want to add a new project so here i'll get a bunch of options here so i want to inst like i want to add a x unit test project so i select this one x unit give the project name as example app dot 
test okay uh, this should be like this yeah and hit enter and choose the default directory yes i want here as well so yeah i have example app dot test over here and now can you see i have by default file created which is my global using and my unit test case all right so let me add a very dummy test case over here so what i'll say i'll say result okay so let me just add a result over here which is equal to one and what i will say right i'll say assert okay assert dot is type so i'll just check for the type of my result which is like this is type okay over here you can specify the type of your uh, result so i'm saying here it is an integer of type okay so that's it so the moment i do this right assert dot type and just pass in your result and that's it so now if you run this project right so now what i'll do right i'll build the project so for building the project right so what you can do you can click on this and you can build all the project those two projects okay so the moment you build right so can you see i got one icon over here which helps to run the test cases if i click over here right it will help me to run the test cases okay can you see it is success now and also if we go over here in the testing right you will get a new test explorer which helps you to give all the like it will show all the unit test cases whatever you have in your application so i'll just give you a very weird scenario what I have faced with this test explorer. So suppose if I try to change the type from int to string, right? So ideally this should fail because my result is not of type integer, like it's not of type string. So ideally this should fail. But if I run this one, right? So most of the time I was getting success. Can you see it? It gives me green. Even after clicking over here, right? It still gives me green. Okay. If I try it like multiple times, then one time it will actually give me a correct answer, which is false. But I don't know. This is quite unstable at the moment. What I feel, I think they still need to upgrade it a good extent. So what I'm doing for now right so i'm actually following the cli way of uh, checking the or running my test cases so to run the test cases right you have to go inside the folder of your application which is example app dot test so let's go in the folder so one way is by using cd you can go inside or else you can go here in the solution explorer right click over here open in integrated terminal and this will do the same job okay so now you have to run a command dot net and test because you want to test we have dot net run and we have dot net test so right now i want to do the testing so if i hit enter right so this will help me to can you see i'm getting a proper error message now that there is one failed okay because this is not of type string correct now if i run this one right so now this will give a exact can you see now it now it now it knows that yes there was an error because i have run that particular command okay so that's why i'm saying that you should follow the cli way of running your test cases now let me make it again correct if i make it as int and save the changes and let me run the command dot net test you can see everything green can you see your test case got passed all right so in this way what we have seen today that how can we transition from visual studio to visual studio code I have shown you like bunch of examples like how your application will run, okay, how your application you can test, how you can install Nugget package and whatnot, all right? If you still have any doubt or if you need any clarification about uh, shifting from VS VS code, do let me know in the comment section or you can follow me on my other social handles. You can directly DM me if you have any queries related to your project or about this video. Anything is fine, all right? So till that time, bye-bye and keep learning, guys.